Drop a knee. Drop a knee. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I wasn't expecting this. Um, so, everybody here, uh, first, Kelly, I really thought I was going to beat you. You were going to beat me, but obviously, uh, I've beaten you, so um, look forward to seeing what I'm doing next year. Hey? I can commit. Uh, I can commit. He's not going to let you win anything, Kelly. Uh, yeah. don't, see, don't get cocky. <laughs> yeah, he might retire right now just to beat you. And then we're going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Belly is like a brother to me. I know I talk a lot of shit to you, Belly. Um, I know we are sarcastic and joke a lot, but I love you. And uh, I don't know what life would be without you. I can't express all the things you've done for me and how much I appreciate it. So, love you, buddy. Yeah. I'm retired, but I'm not there. Yeah, definitely not going to uh, drink tea and watch Netflix. <laughs> Thank you all, and let's hope it's... Uh, Pipe is a great event and I'll be looking forward to seeing you and cheering on for the next couple of uh, decades and um, thanks once again and aloha! Imagine if your life was a movie and you were directing it, what would you do? After all this time, three decades of professional surfing. I raised that footage from yesterday. <laughs> walking through all these different walks of life. I almost want people to experience this story that I've had. Watch this left right here. Tomorrow it literally could have the waves of the year. I just feel like lately, I, all of a sudden, I started surfing good again. And I don't feel like I really did all year. I had moments where I rode a few good waves, but I didn't have a great year surfing. Like, and some of that is not necessarily just the way you ride the wave. It's like just being in the right place, picking the right wave, those kind of things. Just the decision making. You go through in the water. What do you got? You go to the dump. Sometimes you gotta just, no matter what, make yourself believe and think and feel that you're the best, no matter what. So that when you go in the water, you always feel like your best is better than the other guy's best. It's been definitely a learning process. I guess that's a good thing, you know? You, if you're still open to learning, you're still open to, to improving. I don't think I've ever allowed Hawaii to really feel like home. When I go home to Florida, I still feel like Florida's home to me. But my daughter, she's come out here a couple times a year, got to use the house and the truck and stuff, so like, I want her to feel like she's at home. And as a kid, I wanted to live in Hawaii so bad, I think it's so hard for me to realize that I, I live here. The last few years I've only been getting to Hawaii in the first week of December, so I haven't been here in November. Years ago I kind of stopped surfing the Triple Crown and just focused on Pipeline. And then this year we were doing a shoot for HBO 24-7. Kind of gave me a little bit of time to reflect on just spending so much time in Hawaii since I was a little kid. They do such a good production and I was really honored that you know they're going to cover not only surfing but cover myself in, in that way. 24 is one of the best, if not the best, sports documentary anywhere in the world. So it was uh, it's really nice to be included in that and the first time for surfing. So it made it fun doing the show and kind of doing the behind the scenes stuff for Haliva, showing the contest, kind of talking about preparation, both physically and mentally for not only that contest, but also for Pipeline and the winter season in general. I wouldn't have been to Hawaii as soon as I was or surfed Haliva if it wasn't for the HBO show. I was only going to surf Haliva and Pipeline, but then a, a spot opened up at, at sunset and I just figured I'd do the whole Triple Crown. I haven't tried to win the Triple Crown in a long time. I thought, you know, you know I think I could do it. 
Okay. We are going out to the Golf Geeks Golf Tournament, the annual, which I miss every year because I always get here like later this week and they run it like a couple days before I'm here. So finally get to be there for it. What's up, boss? How's the play? It was good. Yeah, bro. I did your interview thing. Oh, you did? Yeah, all good. Kelly and I played for many years and we're always looking for people to go and play with. I need a Mai Tai. Yeah, you're getting one. It's on the bus. How are you? Yeah. It's going to be sick, huh? Yeah. What do you mean? Look at it. We're all teamed up and everything. Is that, wait, is that a foursome scramble or two some scrambles? Uh, two. Two, yeah, that's what I Oh, you're serious about oh, the Mai Tai? Oh, dude, come on. It's like, I've never had a drink this early in the day. The Golf Creek thing started, myself, Kelly, Jake, Tommy Whitaker. We had a big flat spell, I think, half a dozen years ago. Where do you go here? Got a little bit wild out of hand. Got one Instagram account shut down. I'm getting it a little bit loose. It's good to have a little camaraderie on tour and a family on tour when you're away from home for so long. And now the kids are getting into it, which is the best ever. I think it's going to go on for many years after myself and Kelly are gone. Who's that, boys? Yeah. Yeah. It was a uh, pleasure, boys. <laughs> Leo? Maybe lost a heel or two because we probably play too much golf, but... Wow! That's not bad right there. Boom! That's a drink. That's got to be something. They're a great bunch of kids and, you know, they're a testimony to what the sport is. They all look after each other and they're in good hands. That's really cool. It means pretty much a lot if you beat Kelly. I'll tell you what, we took Kelly out on the first hole and I was like, we won. I mean, it still is going, but I didn't care. We had, we had a win-win. <laughs> that was fun. Nothing's better than this shit, man. A lot of good people surrounded by a fun game. Nothing but, wrong with that. Nothing's better than beating who? <sighs> um, the bald guy? <laughs> the guy that wins everything? Yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. Nailed it. Nailed it. I got it. I got it. I was in the tower at Ehukai for just under 20 years. You'd be sitting there on those big west days and you'd see just hundreds and hundreds of wipeouts during the course of the day and you would have thought that we would have had an ambulance shuttle running between Ehukai and Wahiwa or Kahuku Hospital. And it's amazing how few serious injuries happen considering how radical that wave is and how many hundreds of wipeouts you'll see. That really says something to the fitness and coordination, what great athletes they are. I would definitely say Pipeline was my Everest. It was, it was that hill I had to climb and conquer somehow. I could probably make a good argument that was my biggest goal ever in my life, is to have a prominent spot in the lineup at Pipeline. I never at any point felt like I deserve a wave. There was a hierarchy out there that you don't just go break into. I used to free dive out there a lot and look at the reef, get my lineups. I knew where the wave could start and how far it could go and where that little sort of deep spot is at the end between there and off the wall that kind of defines the two waves. To think how many years he's been charging there with such precision and dogged determination, and also with sort of a look of anticipation and fun. Most people just have their heart in their throat going, their eyes as big as saucers going, oh shit, here's back door, or oh God, here comes off the wall. And whereas he seemed to have a bit more of a purposeful or analytical approach to, I'm gonna ride this wave as precisely and effectively as possible. Nowadays, you go out there and there's, it's four foot and there's 60 guys. When I was a kid out there, 
you had to really put your time in and guys were getting kicked out of the water and fins broken off and slapped in the head. I kind of wish that hierarchy, the Phil Perry's of the world and Perry Danes and Johnny Boy would all come back and like sort that lineup out, man. It looks super wonky. It does look wonky from that from beach. Oh wow, the guy goes left. That right was mental. Come out. Look at this left. Watch this left right here. Tomorrow it literally could have the waves of the year in the contest. Waves are bigger today, mostly lefts looks like, but I've, I haven't really been watching. Most guys are catching lefts, but there must be some sneaky rights out there because there's a bit of north in the swell. It's weird pipeline, like surfing the pipe contest just like kind of puts you in this, I think like automatically I get really like super serious, but like <clears throat> the past couple weeks I've been thinking about a lot, how like I'm not too, if I don't go to the Olympics, I, it's fine. I'm like, I'm not worried about it. And I'm not in a world title hunt. There's nothing, and you know, like, so I should just be kind of relaxed and have fun. But <clears throat> I think I want that damn trophy. That surfboard's so bad every year that I can, like, talk myself out of being relaxed sometimes. <laughs> I just need to calm down the water. I get too excited. Like, finally, like, no one's here. I get to do whatever I want out here, you know? When I beat MR's record of four in a row, I knew that that was the only chance I was going to have. I knew that I was going to get burnt out too quickly to, be, to have that much focus ever again in my life. That top tier of surfers right now is just super fun to watch and be part of. There's so much on the line. Obviously, your qualification for the Olympic world title, obviously. Olympic qualification implications. The Vance Triple Crown, that's in your grasp. I really love where the level of surfing's at. Look where he's positioned. That's why it's called back door because you come from behind the section, the back door gets spat out. It wasn't that way when I got on tour. I wanted to see the level be at a place that was scary. That's what I yearned for as a kid. He's very deep here, drives into the section, Slater locked in. He's Whoa. going through, Whoa. and he emerges. When I got on tour, I knew how to easily get rid of guys. So that challenge is much different now. No one surfs the tube at pipe as good as Kelly, and this is why, ladies and gentlemen, look at the technique. It's not that simple these days. When you're the guy who's at the top, you feel like you're in control of that, you know? These are not simple heats to win. Split peak sticking with Kelly. Wide open, bonus section, Slater still traveling. Driving through an impossible section, Kelly makes it. That's what you call a perfect 10. Still the king, the goat as they call him, the greatest of all time. When something happens like that 10 point ride, it feels like everything in the world makes sense. Not just in that moment, for the days after and weeks and months even. All I can do is smile. I want to congratulate you on clinching your third Vance Triple Crown. Coming onto the sand, being greeted by Mark Cunningham. He pours the champagne on you. I mean, those moments must feel just so awesome. Twenty-one years, I think, since the last one. Uh, might have to do one more lap. <laughs> we'll see. It'd be nice to walk out of your career with a win at, at Pipeline. Kelly Slater, your Vance Triple Crown is surfing. Oh, I've been planning this attack for twenty-one years. I mean, what a way to go out! But I won the Triple Crown, and I got one of the best ways I've ever had a backdoor in the contest. Eat to load wins his first world title. I thought it was awesome. It was cool to see. And if I was going to lose, at least I lost to the guy who won the world title and won the contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats, man. Good job, man. Good job. Good job.
Thank you, man. Yeah, you're, you're, you're dead. You're dead. Yes, yes. Thank you. Good job, man. That's awesome. You have to be realistic as you're getting older and what's deemed to be a young man's sport. I beat everybody in the top 10 in the past year except for John John. There's a positive feedback from that, obviously. You see that you can beat these guys that are all world title contenders. And that was how I started my career. I would beat someone and I'd be like, oh, well, they were able to win a heat against Tom Curran, so I should be able to win a heat against that person. Being eighth at 47 years old, it's a pretty big accomplishment for myself personally. And I do know that I could have been higher than that. It's a weird temptation that always sits there until it's real clear that you have no chance. My brother was trying to push me to go to 50. You gotta do it when you're 50, like no one's ever done that. And if you stay in the top 10 your whole career until you're 50, no one will ever touch that. Maybe that's a bar I need to try and set. And if I can, then the guys like Medina and those guys coming from behind are like, I, I can beat that. And that can elongate that career for people. All right, see you guys. Oh, what a day. I've had people telling me for years to quit. I mean, I, I received a message from some guy online a couple days ago. He's like, why don't you just retire, you idiot? I'm like, people have been telling me that for 10 years. I, those experiences are a good part of my life. I wouldn't have got that 10 in pipe. And your name is Kelly Slater. You're going to get a two, mix on score, and I'm not three, surprised at that. Four, it's going to be, well, there it is, a perfect five, score joke. That's when you a lot of sections, no way. <laughs> this will never get old, you know? I'll be like 90 here trying to chip balls around the yard. Well, look at that one. That guy's a pussy. Should have gone right. <laughs> These kids can't do it the way we used to do it. I know. Whenever he's on tour, all he talks about is being off tour and being able to just go anywhere he wants and just score good waves all the time. And no matter where he is in the world, he's looking at like four different forecasts. So there's like half of him wants to stop the tour so he can freeze him up to surf tons of good waves, and the other half feels like he'll never stop competing. His heart is still so in it somehow, it's crazy. He was winning world titles before a lot of the guys yeah, on the tour born. right now were, were born. Yeah. yeah. You never really know them. He could be on for another 10 years or he could win the title next year and then retire. You never really know. Still winning triple crown, so might as well keep on going. <laughs> <laughs>